into this Sunday morning service, and actually whenever you're watching it, I know overseas you guys are watching it on Monday mornings, Monday afternoons, Monday evenings, and, and throughout whenever this message is going forth, God bless you, and you'll be blessed by the word of God and the message today that's just for you and for our Believers family. Thank you for partnering with us with your prayers. We can sense and we can feel. Thank you for all the people that are writing out to us. We have a bunch of people this last week that wrote out to us from different parts of the United States around the world. Thank you so much. We're praying for you. We believe God is touching your life in every area, and you're increasing because God's kingdom increases more and more daily, and so we believe in that with you, and we're going to start and go right into our Christmas carol series, The Joy of Singing. Don't you love to sing? Bah humbug if you don't. (laughs) <laughs> this is called the joy of singing our we started our message last week with the first noel the song we went over the history of this song incredible history dating back oh, before the 1400s this song was in latin and french came across to cornwall england and two guys got together they put 21 songs together go back and listen to last week's message got 21 songs together because the purpose in their heart and during the 1800s you see it throughout the earth during the 1800s god had this movement movement of singing. That's when caroling started. Because before that, before the 1800s, Christmas was celebrated on Christmas Day, which is today, and Christmas Eve. Before You don't do anything before those days. But I believe it was God's purpose and God's power to start people heralding the Christmas message more than just on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And so these two guys, and we talked about William Sands, a lawyer, a Christian lawyer, and another guy named Davies Gilbert, who was in parliament and government, got together and they gathered 21 different songs around into a hymn book. And then carolers started taking off. And when carolers Carolers started taking off. It was like you could walk up to somebody's door and go, hey, hey, hey. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's a Christian. But if when, when singers came up, you know, because you're preaching the gospel, hey, you guys, you want to know Jesus Christ. But when you're singing the gospel, we talked a lot about that last week. Just listen to the message last week. When you're singing the gospel, the power of God is there. People are getting seeds into their life. God's able to place things to get them in a position. A lot of us are praying for family members. Well, guess what? During this Christmas season, we're believing God for labors to be sent across their path, as Jesus told us to pray for. And we're believing these songs are touching everybody's heart and getting them to know Jesus Christ. Last week, we talked about the untapped power of praise. A lot of people don't know their power packed behind praise. We talked a little bit about Joshua. Joshua got a hold of this untapped power of praise, and he said, guess what, guys? God told me we're going to walk around this wall seven times, and when we praise, things are going to start shaking. And by faith, they stepped out. You know, faith without action is dead, the Bible says. I said, faith without action is dead. You can pray all day, but until you step out into what God is calling you to do, that's when God moves. The whole subject right there. All right. So we're talking about this, this, the song Noel. We talked about Noel, the meaning of the word Noel last week. We talked about this word has four Noels. Actually, there's 20 of them, but four back-to-back Noels. The first one's capitalized, and in the original Latin, it was capitalized on purpose because that meant like singing, heralding, it's Jesus' birthday. It just, it's just a surprise, like wake-up type of thing. And then the, the second part of the verse, and they're interchangeable. So you, so you can say the first Noel is capitalized. The second one is non-capitalized. I guess a lot of people haven't seen last week's message out there. So I'm going over some things a little more than I wanted to, but that's okay. So what we're singing is we're singing a rejoiceful song that is about sing, 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 sing Jesus Christ is born. That's basically the message. So it's a powerful hymn when you study the background of it and these guys, and, the, and there's nine verses. Our verses don't even match the nine original verses. And we were, we're going over those nine original verses. There's a tenth one added. We talked about that last week. There's nine original, um, it's, it's on the... Yeah, it's on the back of your pamphlet. It'll be on underneath your YouTube notes, underneath your Daily Motion notes, wherever you're watching this from. Look for the notes online at believersinternational.tv. But this is the key to this message. This message we're breaking up in three different parts. Last week, because there, there's nine verses. There was a tenth one added later, but there's nine verses. The first two are about shepherds and what je- shepherds saw and giving glory to Jesus Christ and the birth of Jesus. The next five we're going to go over really quickly today are about the wise men. And I'm telling you, I can go off on this for days because the wise men were pretty wise. 
<laughs> You're like, what? What was that? What? Because they had to pray to believe God to see the star. To see the star, there had to be purpose in their heart, to intent in their heart to go after Jesus and find the real Messiah. I mean, we can go off on that. Okay, that's that was just like a little tidbit, and you can you can just you rewind that on your t- and go over slowly and go if you if you missed any of that part. But listen, we are excited because then the, it goes two five two, and the last two verses are for us. Say us us and the world. So this is an incredible song. The meaning of the song is pretty incredible. The root word, of course, is from the Latin. It means birthday. We went over that last week. Uh, French people always say Joel, joy, Noel, joy, Noel, joy, Noel. I've got Carol Joy sitting over here, my wife. But I'll tell you what, joy is a big part of our lives. And I believe, you know, I'm going to take up and back off on a little, in a little box right here. But listen, I believe God is putting joy in the church right now. The world needs to hear about Jesus Christ, and they're not going to hear it from somebody who's going, all right, turn your Bibles over to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And you'd be like, this is the boringest guy I've ever seen in my life. No, the message of God is powerful and joyful, and it's life-changing. And so we want to get into that. So we went over the shepherds last week. The shepherds, we talked about God. They, they, just, they were just doing about their business, and God showed up. And when we're about our business, believe in God, he's going to show up, all right? We talked about, let's dive into the wise men today and our scriptural verse. I'm going to go through these slides pretty quickly. And if I'm talking too fast, it's not because I don't drink, I haven't had any coffee. I haven't had, I've, had, I've had water this morning, so it's just me. <laughs> People came up to me from last week and said, you know, you were really loud. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be louder then. Yeah. So um, our, our, our tag team verse for this whole message is Luke chapter 2 verse 11, incredible scripture. We all know this, but it's a great scripture to birth this message on. For you is born this day in the town of David, a Savior, who is the Christ, the Messiah, the Lord. Yes! So let's jump right into Noel. We're going into verse 3. And like I said, if you didn't get the first two verses, listen to last week's. But this is going, the song Noel, Noel now is diving into verse 3. And then by the light, here comes the wise men. And then by the light of the same star, three wise men came from far, country far to seek for a king was their intent. What was their purpose? The real king. They were kings seeking for the real king. That'll preach. That's next, that's next year's message. Just kidding. <laughs> they were seeking their purpose. They had a purpose. And we have to have purpose in life. And we say it every year. Like we're getting up. Like this last week, I'm going over the, the goals for next year for my own personal life. Those target goals that I want to hit. I've had, I, I got to go over all the ones we hit this year. We hit a ton of them this year, guys, in the church. A ton of them. This, look, I'm losing weight. I got new pants on. Look at that. They were falling down a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Hallelujah. But our purpose well, our purpose was to seek the king and to follow, everybody say follow. follow, follow the star wherever it went. We need to follow the Lord wherever he wants us to go. Yeah. It might be uncomfortable, it might not, and, and most of the time it's not what we expected because our little brains cannot compute the big things that God has for us. Amen? So don't try to figure this thing out. To follow the star where it went, Noel, Noel, in other words, birthday song, birthday song, birthday all the way, hey! It's a birthday song. This is a birthday song. We have to keep that in mind. Amen? That's why it's lasted for how many years? Because this gives God glory, God praise, got the whole thing in it. It's very biblical. Let's go on to verse 4 because we got a lot to cover today. This star drew nigh to the northwest. Oh, Bethlehem, it took its rest. And there it did both stop and stay. It's a ramp. You're rapping right now. Right over the place where Jesus lay. Yeah. <laughs> I guess some people are rappers. You guys, I love you. Come on, bring it on. Verse 5, then did they know assuredly within that house the king did lie. The baby lied in the house. One entered in then, for then they say they found the baby in poverty. Ha, ha, ha. That wasn't going to last. Because the next verse annihilates that. Yeah. Right? Poverty. Yeah. Things, it, it, it's like saying, and poverty, found the baby in poverty, and you could just say this. But things are about to change, guys, because this is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Amen. Born the king of Israel. So let's bust into the next, bust the rhyme. Let's bust the next one. Verse 6. Then entered in the house three, three, those wise men three, full of reverently upon their knees. Man, we got to get back to being on our knees, guys. Don't you love it? 
There offered there in his presence on their knees their gold, their mirth, and their frankincense. They're saying, God, everything belongs to you. What can I do? What can I give? What can... Their, fir- their purpose in their heart was to find the king, and their purpose right now is to follow the king. Yeah, and that's our purpose. I said, that's our purpose. That's right. They gave of their substance. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't want to give to God. Hey, 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 listen. You know, I, I don't want to get into this. In fact, I X'd a lot of these notes out because I didn't have time for them. You study out. There was a word that was lost in our English vocabulary in 1600. It ended in 1600. It's called allowment. Allowment. And allowment was when you can work in someone else's life and they're working together. Let's just say my wife. My wife and me have a marriage. Thank God she's beautiful. Okay. So anyways, we, we have a marriage. And I, I love her, right? But she allows me to love her. Because I could just say, I love Carol Joy. No, I sh- that, that's the faith of that works dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, I love my wife. So I, I, I allow her to love me. She allows me. We have everything in common. You could say covenant. The word allowment is like the word covenant. But it really means that whatever's mine and whatever's yours, we're working in this thing together. But I need you to allow me. I need to, you to allow me. And it's just this allowment. It's, it's, a big, it's just a big teaching in like a half a sentence here. But listen, that's why when we come to God and we pray, that allows him to do things in our lives. When we appraise him and there's junk around us, Glory to God. He's allowed to come in and destroy and annihilate those works. Amen. Glory to God. Last week, I just going to go back to this saying. Last week, we talked a lot about this one saying, praise invades hell. When you're praising him, he is changing things around you. You're allowing him to come in. Just like Jesus, you're my savior. You allowed him to be your savior. This is this word of allowment. And so we have to know that when we are giving, even giving of our finances, we're allowing him to come in and and strengthen our business, come in and strengthen our family, come in and strengthen everything in our lives. It's word, guys. So this allowment is so important. And these guys got it. These three wise men got it. They're like, I'm purposing. Number one, their number, my purpose is to seek him intently. Right? That's what they said. They're seeking him intently. They're following that star intently. They're bowing down intently. That's our worship, guys. Mm, man, this is good. Hallelujah. I'm getting excited myself. Hallelujah. And then our giving, too. So we just don't, like, oh, here's a dollar. No. There's purpose in our giving. There's purpose in us reaching the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ, guys. There's a purpose in this. There's a purpose why I'm still on the earth. I was counting. You know what? I think you should do this. And I, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but... I've almost died a couple times in my life. And it was more than five. You know? And I I, I stopped there and I was and I had some more, but I was meditating on there this week. And I'm I am so glad. You have a purpose for me on this earth, Lord. God has a purpose for you on this earth, too. It's a good purpose. It's a fun purpose. It's an enjoyable purpose. Well, I don't want to do this. Well, he's probably not going to call you to do that. A little quiet in this little church here. <laughs> purpose, but they intended purpose. So allowment, can you see a little bit about allowment? We're just allowing God to live. Hey, don't you want God to come in and move in your life? Yeah. Hello, yee Do it, Lord. And we add faith to it. And All right, let's move on. Glory to God. Where are we at? Verse uh, 7. Between an ox and a stall and a donkey, this child truly was born he was. Yeah, there born he was. Back to, uh, no, I can't even say uh, Elizabethan English. For want of clothing, they did let him lay all in a manger among the hay. Hey. <laughs> hey there. So this comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. This whole, this, so it's very biblical. We're taking songs in this series and we're looking at biblical perspectives, putting faith with it, learning about their history, and bringing others into this time of the year. This is like a, a soul winning service, guys. They're coming and learning how, oh, I never knew that song. I sang that song when I was a kid. They're really learning about these songs. And this is the Magi, you can say the, the wise men, the kings. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, 
the Magi, the kings, different translations, from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star. Talk about wisdom. Like the children of Issachar in the Old Testament. The children of Issachar knew the times and the seasons for Israel. They were the wise people. We are smart. We have that today. We know the times and the seasons we're in in our personal lives. Right? Right on. We're going for it. We're going for God. We're going for life. We're going for enjoyment. Number nine, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. Could you imagine that? They'll keep falling that star. Oh, this, oh the star stopped. It stopped, guys. That's it. Target it. Put your GPS on. Google. Let's go for it. <laughs> Verse 10. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed, not just joyed. And we talked about Noel. The first Noel means a surprise joy. Yo, yeah, celebration. On the coming in the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirth. That probably means nothing to you, but I'll tell you, to them, that was everything. That's like somebody coming in 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 a Rolls Royce. Three guys coming in, there's three Rolls Royces picking up. Oh, there's three guys walking out with three Rolls Royces. That's pretty cool. And they walk in and they just have like total, you just name it. Yeah, we were just went to our Swiss bank account. Here's a couple pallets of gold. Here's a couple, you know, I mean, they, they blessed Jesus Christ and his family. Yeah. And we do the same two day. Yeah. Not about you, but I do that. So what can we learn from these wise men? Of course, we said like the wise men, we need to be intently seeking God. Number two, being hungry to follow him wherever he wants us to go. Yeah. Gonna, uh, wherever he wants us to go. Guys, God has so many fun things for us to do. The church is fun. Church is fun. God is fun. He created fun. If there was no, I'm telling you, the devil didn't create any fun whatsoever. He's out to kill, steal, and destroy. Bang. But Jesus came that you might have life, woohoo, and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. There you go. There you go. So uh, going wherever he wants us to go, doing whatever he wants us to do. Even if it's something so small, you're like, that's too small for my life. No, God wants you. He's, gonna, he, he's, gonna, he's got promotion ahead for you. And when you do those things, then he promotes you more. You know, first the, first the corn and the ear and the full corn in the ear, you know, that kind of that kind of process. Let's move on. Everybody happy? I am. Number four, we give him whatever he wants us to give. So that we, we went over the shepherds, went over the wise men, and now we're going to go over you and I for the world. We are the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're going to go over the next verses, and we come to yourself and the world. It, you know, I was thinking about this this week because I'm a real big believer in self-awareness. If I need to grow somewhere, I'm asking God all the time because I know I'm not perfect. I Believe me, I know I'm not perfect. But we have to be aware of our talents, but our weaknesses and strengthen those weaknesses. Come on, David. Let's just, this, wasn't, this is nothing in my notes. But we need to strengthen our weaknesses, guys. You know, there's certain things in our lives that we need to take a look at and say, hey, listen, I know I could grow more in this. And that's, we all have to do it. Because when you think you're grown up, how many of you know when you were a teenager, you thought, man, I'm so smart. Why should I even turn 21? <laughs> I've got it all figured out. Remember? Remember when you were that young? Well, guess what? Even now, you, no matter what age you are, there's so many things we can grow in. Because when we get to heaven, we're just going to take off from where we left off, I believe. We're just going to take off. And I'm excited to I gotta stay on earth for a while. Hallelujah. <laughs> so let's go over. So we're going to talk about you and the world. We're going on to verse, let's go, uh, we're, we're at verse 8. Well, I just mixed them up. This is 9, 8. So we'll go to, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll read verse 8 because it looks like the slides are switched on there. Of course, you'll have it on there in front of you. Then let us all with one accord, everybody say one accord, one accord. sing praises to our heavenly Lord. Yes, that's us. Huh? Oh. Oh, the next one's the song. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay, that's right. Okay, well then, well, let's, let's look at it then. Pastor Carol Joy's amazing. Oh, look at the little green thing. Yeah, that was for me, so I'd know. No, I'm kidding. Anyways, then let us with all one accord sing praises to our heavenly Lord that has made heaven and earth of naught, and with his blood mankind has bought. Mm. 
That right there is pretty, I mean, we can talk a lot about this, but I think you guys know exactly what the meaning of this is. It is incredible. Let's move on to verse 9, our last verse. If we in our time shall we do well, we shall be free from death and hell. For God has prepared for all of us a resting place in general. Now this word, of course, general is different today. It actually means, hey guys, listen, this is done. This is, this is sol- solid. This is complete. You know, n- there's no more death and hell for you. There's only heaven for you. And that's why this song is, happy birthday, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'd love to sing this song in heaven. I bet, you know, I wonder if they're singing this song in heaven. This is a pretty good song. So anyways, we need a place. The resting place is done for us. I said the resting place is done in general for us. And the chorus goes on to, you know, Noel, Noel, Noel. You can, there's many words you can intertwine in that. You could say sing, 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 sing. You could say sing, rejoice. It's Jesus' birthday. There's all these interchangeable words that are with Noel. That it, it's, just, it's like one of those words where you can't put like just one definition on it. It's one of those words you look up in your concordance in a dictionary. It has all these different meanings to it. That is the word Noel. So wrapping it up for, for going into all the world, we need to tell people, you and I need to go into all the world and tell exactly what Jesus told us to do. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Guys, no matter what you've done, he's never going to condemn you, condemn you at all. Love Love, love. You want to see a good definition of love? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, love. Unselfish in every single way, totally watching out for the other person. Amen. Verse 17 again. For God did not send his son of the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. And that is changing in the world for us today. We are going after people. We're, we're in the people business. We love people, all nations. And you can see we're reaching out all those white things on that map. Those are all the, the nations that this, this message is hitting today. Right there. People watching this message are being touched. And you guys, use whatever you can. Use the notes Tell others about Jesus Christ wherever you're at. And I know some of you are in persecuted nations. I know it. We've been praying this out. You've been reaching out to us that you, you can't, you, you, we're praying for you. God's going to give you wisdom. And it might not be the way you think it's going to be, but you're going to be able to reach people. And your praying is touching millions of lives. Amen. So that's the message for Noel, Noel, Noel. I wanted to try to complete it this week because I knew I could do another week on it. <laughs> so I'm glad that we completed it this week. And we have a couple minutes left. And I, want to, I wanted to see if I wanted to share, share something with you real quickly. Let's, let's wrap up the message first. So what we've learned for this message, number one, like the shepherds, we need to be about our business and God will show up and reveal himself to us. Be about our business. Just be about God's business. Number two, like the wise men, we need to be intently seeking God and being hungry to follow him wherever he wants us to go and whatever he wants us to do. Number three, the message is not only for you. It's about taking this message to all the world, starting with your home, your workplace, and your community, and singing this celebration song, Noel, Noel, Noel. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I have this whole other area to go into. Um, thank you, Father God. Last week, I'm going to say this. Last week, we, we ended the service, and we shared scriptures with you on praise and the power of praise and how the question would be is, when do we praise? And last week, we saw in the morning, in the evening, all day long, continually. Well, there's some scriptures that I'm going to share, and they're going to be on your notes uh, or if I, I don't think I put them on your notes because I wasn't sure I was going to go there. But I want to say a qu- couple quick words about praising God. And we're going to end it here. There's a few scriptures and we're going to do three different places that I found that we should praise God. One, we should praise God in our home. And I'm going to give you three scriptures in a second. Two, we need to praise God with the saints and in our church. And number three, we need to praise God in the world. Let the world see us praise. Yes. Yes. 
That's what caroling, that's why caroling just launched in the 1800s. So the first one at home, Psalm uh, 78.4, Psalm 78.4, and for you watching, I'll have them up there. Psalm 78.4, we're talking about at home. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. Starts at home, amen. Another one, Psalm 79.13, Psalm 79.13. Psalm 79, 13 says, Then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will thank you forever and ever, praising your greatness from generation to generation. That starts at home, guys. That's how we spread the gospel in singing and praising and worshiping. The last one, there's so many. I just did three here. The last one, Psalm 149, 5. Psalm 149, 5. Were we at home? Let the saints be joyful in glory. I like this. Let them sing aloud on their beds. So you can stand on your bed. You can jump on your bed. <laughs> you can praise on your bed. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Psalm 149.5. Don't you like that? Let the saints be joyful in glory. You guys are going to go home. But Psalm 149 says, all your children. Psalm 149.5 says we can jump on our, bread, our bed and sing aloud to God, mom and dad. Hallelujah. So that was, that was at home number, uh, the second was at the church, at the church. Psalm 22, 22 says this with the saints. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of your assembly, I will praise you. Do you love that? Psalm 35, 18 says this. Psalm 35, 18. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. Great assembly. La last one here, Psalm uh, 1849. This is among the saints. Psalm 1849 says this. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the... Oh, oh, this is, oh, no, that was it for that one. Yeah, I only had two for the church. I wrote these down quickly. Two for the church. This is for the world. These are for the world right now. Psalm, um, yeah, Psalm, one, Psalm 1849 says this. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles, I will sing your name. That's what we're doing. We're caroling. Yeah. We're singing the love of Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you what, the radio stations, like we said last week, they're doing a great job for us. Hallelujah. I like it in the New Living Translation of Psalm 1849 says, Oh, this, Lord, I will praise you among the nations. I will sing praises to your name. I will sing praise among the nations. That's what we're, every nation needs to hear the songs of Jesus Christ. And I believe this song has went around the world because of that. And the last one, of course, singing here in the world is very famous scripture in Acts 16.25. And you can preach on this scripture. So many sermons in the scripture. Acts 16.25, this is when Paul and Silas were in prison. And it says this, verse 25 of Acts 16. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening. And suddenly, oh, Carol Joy's in the, the suddenlies. There was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, the power praise guys, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Not just Paul and Silas. When we're praising him, like I said, it, it's, an, it, it's exciting heaven and it's invading hell. He's allowed, when we're praising him, he's allowed to work this area of our lives. And really, this, this is a good scripture for that. Yeah. All the doors immediately fell open. The chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, stop, don't kill yourself, we are all here. And we know the end of the story, he got his whole family born again and saved. So let's, let's wrap it up here, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the service today. We thank you so much for your power and your might. May we always give you glory, Father, in everything that we do. Thank you for all of our believers, family that are watching, Father, and that are here, Father. We are so excited that we're in the body of Christ, of believers throughout the world, Father God, bringing this message and bringing people to heaven for you, Jesus. We love you so much. Glory to God. Now, I'm going to say this. You can all look up here. If you have never, you know, we have to end every service because it's my heart to end every service for the kingdom of God.
But for the kingdom of God, we need to see people come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're watching this, and a lot of people stumble upon our, our YouTube and watch our messages, and if you're watching this and, and you're like, yeah, but I'm going to turn it off now, don't turn it off now. And you're saying to yourself, but God can never forgive me for everything that I've done in my life. There's no way. There's no way. My parents can't forgive me. My kids can't forgive me. My friends can't forgive me. Nobody can forgive me. God can't forgive me then. But yes, he has. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and for me, and he took that all away. He forgives you, he loves you, and he's saying, if this is your first time asking him in your heart, he's saying, come on, the door is wide open, come on in. If you've asked him before and you're saying, but it's, it's so bad, he'd never forgive me, guess what, he has, and he will, 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 and that's what love does. Come on home today. Ask him in your heart today. Rededicate your life today. Let's reaffirm and affirm our commitment to Jesus Christ. Let's all say this together and mean it from all of our heart. Say this, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus you're my Savior. You're my savior. I, said I said it. You're my Savior. You said in your word, if I would say, if I would say Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is Lord, and died for my sins, and, for my sins. and believe it in my heart, in my heart. That, Jesus that Jesus was raised from the dead, just for me, I would be saved, I would be born again, I would now be in the family of God forever, in Jesus' name, amen. And if that's your first time saying that, guess what? All the angels, and even if it's your second or third or whatever, the angels of God are rejoicing in heaven. And believe me, guys, they don't rejoice like we rejoice. Yay. No, they flat rejoice. It's like going into a wild party saying, what is going on? Take it up a few more notches, and you're going to see what heaven's like. Because they're so excited that one more is coming to the kingdom of God. Listen, reach out to believersinternational.church. There's some materials on there. Go to the section Believing, oh, brand new to Jesus. Go to that section. Lots of great materials for you. Get on there. Email us. Text us. Call us. Let us know what we can do more for you because we love you so much. Well, this is, we're coming to end the service right now. In here, we have a little bit more announcements to do. We receive our offering, and thank you for sending your offerings in. If God leads you, that's great. We're believing God with you. That we're just, you're sowing into the kingdom of God, and this message is going all over the world, and thank you so much. But in the end of the service, we always say for the kingdom, because we do everything for the kingdom of God. So on the count of three, one, two, three, for the kingdom. Have a great week, guys. We love you so much. Hallelujah.